Hi. My name is Julian. I'm a French musician and a filmmaker. This is my third time visiting New York. And this time I met this guy. This is Cristiano. Cristiano is an Italian singer, actor and performer who moved from Rome to New York City five years ago with one goal in mind, emerge as an artist in New York. So he explains to me that he has a whole crew of artist friends in the city and since I'm a filmmaker, I should put together a documentary about him and them. Artists trying to make it in the Big Apple. The idea was interesting, as those artists chose to do something that many artists all over the world think about doing. Move to New York to reach success. Let's put it this way. They decided to do what I never did. So why not listen to what they have to say? So I scheduled an appointment with each of them individually. They invited me to different places throughout the city. And so we start. I ask them to introduce themselves and tell us what it is that they do. I'll kick it off. <laughs> My name is Max Music. I'm, uh, I'm an artist. And uh, I come from Haiti. My name is Sarah Rex. I'm a fashion stylist in New York City and I do style consulting. My name is Sonia and I am an actress. My name is Daniel Gomez Castrillon. I'm Colombian national and I'm a photographer here in New York City. I am Andrea, Andrea Galata. And here in America, I am Andrea Galada. <laughs> and I'm an actor. My name is Ash Reed, and I am a content creator for social media, uh, YouTube in particular, and also Instagram. My name is Chiara. I should say I come from Italy, but actually I come from Sicily. I, I am a girl from the island in New York. I am an actress and a script writer. Well, I'm Melly Mel, I'm Smacks Music's wife. <laughs> um, I'm a percussionist in the Smacks Music band. And I'm also a graphic designer. I'm Cristiano, and this is Thomas Mester, my producer, and uh, he plays with me on live shows. We do music together uh, in New York, electronic music, dance. My name is Creighton Fraker, and uh, I am a, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a musician. Uh, I'm a dancer. I'm a singer, uh, songwriter. My name is Max Miller. I'm a singer, songwriter, trip hop, anti folk one-man rock show. And we try to make it in New York. Most of these people come from outside of New York. Some of them have reached a certain level of exposure, but none of them are what we call famous. And maybe that's not even what they're looking for. So that's what we're about to find out. How and why they came to New York, and or why they stayed here, alongside funny stories and personal insights. I started by meeting up with Andrea, a Sicilian actor and dancer who moved to New York less than a year ago. He took me to Battery Park, at the southern tip of Manhattan, one of the legendary arrival points for immigrants. Oh, actually I started in my hometown in Sicily when I was only 15. I've been lucky, I started working as a dancer while studying, and then I never stopped. Diversity. That's why I'm here. I like to confront with many different flavors, many different emotions, styles, points of view. Uh, I like the open source concept. That's why I really think that New York is the, the right place for me. So many cultures, people from all around the world here. A great, a great opportunity for your creativity. I used to have a career in Italy, but the economical situation was so stagnant, so I want to try to do the same here, but maybe better. So it's really exciting, it's really challenging. At the same time, it's like starting from zero. 
So I, you come here, you don't know anyone. You miss so much your friends, your beautiful country, your relatives, the food. <laughs> I got my first job just a few days after. Uh, I've been like applying uh, on the internet. <laughs> Day and night, the first days, I sent hundreds, hundreds of applications, and it worked. The other phase of the coin is that the competition is really high, and that you really start again. You have to learn everything. But you know what? In New York, it looks like everyone is starting from zero in a, in a way, in some way. So you don't feel alone. I used to say, more than a city, it's like a big harbor. People get off and get in every day <laughs> from this amazing, so crazy, beautiful, noisy uh, city. Yeah. <laughs> What's amazing is that I already feel I'm home and it's, it's incredible. I have many colleagues, many friends. You know, American people really believe in what they do. They usually believe in their country, believe in their dreams. Uh, not everyone, but more than us, European. We are more cynical. We've grown up more <laughs> because we have so much history. They are younger. But I think it's a secret to learn, to be really consistent, to believe in what you do. Uh, because at the end of the day, if you are consistent for years and years, something happens. Because many people are like, oh, if I had, if I had studied dance, oh, if I had studied singing, oh, if I had moved to New York. <laughs> when I asked him how he got here, Andrea explained to me that he received an artist visa and then won a green card through the diversity lottery. This program randomly grants residency to 50,000 people each year in order to diversify U.S. immigration. And Andrea, he was one of them. After Andrea, I left Manhattan and headed to Astoria Park in Queens to interview Creighton. Creighton is an American singer and dancer. He moved on a whim from South Dakota to New York 13 years ago. So I grew up in South Dakota, uh, a far departure from New York, <laughs> um, as a preacher's kid. And so I kind of grew up singing in church and that's where all the music kind of started for me. It was a very spontaneous decision when I first decided to come here. Um, I had a friend who also wanted to move to New York and we packed up my car. I was driving this hearse at the time, I don't know why, but uh, we had a, you know, had a bunch of room in the back of it so we kind of like just packed all of our junk in the back of that thing and we drove all the way from the Midwest to New York City and uh, we didn't know what we were doing. We knew one person here. There's so many things that I had to relearn how to do here. And it's a, it's a, it's a totally different, it's a different way of living. When I first moved here, uh, I started kind of doing more theater. I ended up getting some, um, some fun acting jobs from that, um, doing some tours and, um, I actually was, uh, worked on a, a cartoon for Nickelodeon for a while, which was a lot of fun. And I auditioned for American Idol, um, and I got pretty far on the show uh, and had some success from that. And I think in some ways it is harder to do it here because it is a rat race, you know? There's everyone is an artist, everyone is doing this. But at the same time, I think that there's something exciting about that, you know? People don't seem to be pretentious here, I guess. Uh, I don't know, I don't know why that is, but, um, uh, but yeah, that's what I really like about New Yorkers is the, you know, not only are they from all over the world, but they just seem to be very genuine people. There's something about like the energy here that, that really kind of inspires you and makes you feel like um, you can create something out of the ordinary, something that's um, different than what you are used to seeing. People who are dressed in completely crazy ways and who are, you know, saying crazy things and doing crazy things. I've had a lot of successes in the music business, but I'm so far from where I want to be, you know? There's, and I don't think I'll ever feel like I've gotten there. New York has definitely always been a part of 
my successes and my struggles, you know. It's, uh, it's always been a little of both. After leaving Queens, Cristiano invited me to his rooftop in the East Village. He chose New York because he says, quote, I watch a lot of movies, and movies told me that New York is the place. <laughs> I came here in New York with uh, no English five-ish years ago, and for a year it was like clueless. Because in Italy I was doing kind of okay, but here in New York I didn't know anybody, like zero people. With my zero English was like, when I should start. And, and usually in New York you start on Craigslist. <laughs> And he called me because he had uh, like millions of hours of music already recorded. I'm just singing randomly on, uh, on his track and we had a single right away. <laughs> I used to play rock and I thought, no, this is dance music. It's not the kind of thing I do. I might need to go back on a band and I joined a band. And it was a horrible idea, the worst idea ever. You know, when you try to do the same thing you used to do in your country or somewhere else, like a replica of yourself, it's a, it's a bad idea. Just like wash yourself, clean yourself, redo in a different way everything. And that's what happened with Thomas. Success. For me, success is like uh, I sing the song and I just give up the song and I jump into the crowd and I start dancing with everybody. That is success. The only problem with Italy is that there's too many Italians. And it's not because Italians are bad, but because without a mixed culture, you think you, you deserve something. It's mine because I'm Italian. Oh, this is, this is unacceptable. Look the city how dirty is it. Oh, dude, clean it up. <laughs> Here in New York, the feeling is like this one. You want to fix something, take a screwdriver and fix it. So the first year wasn't that great. <laughs> and finally, I found a, a new job, like bartending. What I realized is also that like, you should have a feedback and you should listen to people what they would like to listen to. They don't have a clear idea. So you listen to them. You can't avoid yourself. I'm the filter between what you might want, what I know I want, and back to you. So you're going to give me something back again. And there's a... It's a circle that goes until you find the exact tempo and everybody's going to dance at the same time. In Italy, it's something like you always try to not be equal to the others. Uh, but here, what I like about success, you can be the most su successful person and still remember that you came from Queens. No money, no English, and you're grateful for that. He turned to nowadays pop music with the memory of listening to The Wall by Pink Floyd and his dad telling him he should listen to real music, meaning classical music. Now he hears people telling their kids the same thing about today's music. Listen to real music, listen to Pink Floyd. Smax and Melly asked me to come to their rehearsal at a studio overlooking Madison Square Garden. I listened to their answers, as well as their Caribbean rock groove, while the lights of the garden sat metaphorically in the background. The expression of my art is to raise awareness about enjoy life. So I've always loved music. My, I'm, I'm Dominican, and so growing up, my father, merengue, salsa, like that was what we played in the house. Um, and when I got to junior high school, I joined a school band. And that was my first time actually being in a band ensemble and loved it. I played trombone for a little bit, the clarinet for a little bit. Fast forward uh, my college years, I met Smax <laughs> when I was a junior in, in uh, college. I went to NYU. At that point in my, in my life, I was uh, starting to get into graphic design. So um, when he decided to turn the band, uh, convert from one musician to a band, I thought I would just be involved in like designing of flyers and you know, all, all that kind of stuff. But he actually came home one day without telling me and brought home a djembe. And he was like, this is what I want you to play for the band. <laughs> she was a natural at it. I just gave it to her and she started beating on it. I didn't know that music was going to be my, uh, I didn't know it was going to be my thing. 
I knew that growing up that I love entertainment. I love to entertain. And um, I actually picked up the guitar very late. One time um, I took a, a friend's guitar that was just sitting in his room and then I never gave it back to him. <laughs> I eventually paid him uh, the money for the guitar because I would not give the guitar back. And I started writing songs and uh, one day uh, people who used to hear me just practice, they said, ah, you should join this um, uh, talent show that they do. And I'm like, me talent show? No, come on, you know? <laughs> so I got, co I got convinced into participating. But that day when I played at the talent show and the connection that I made with the people, the way that I felt, I said, wow, I would really love to be doing this for the rest of my life. I came from a different country. And the idea for coming here was to uh, improve my life. And not just my life, improve the life of my whole family. So it's, it's a big responsibility. And that was the goal. And um, along the way, I realized that to be my best self, I need to really do what makes me happy. And what I'm trying to do with that, what makes me happy the most, is when I'm connecting with people, is when I inspire people, when I motivate them in some way to move towards their best selves. There's a feeling, there's a vibe, and there's a scene. Yeah. When you hit the scene, you know you're in the scene. Hey, what's going on here, you know? You're making new friends. They're very nice people. In every way. You stop any New Yorker right now, you say, hello. They say, hey, I gotta go. <laughs> we are rehearsing, we have shows coming up, we're performing. This is what we want to do, and we're doing it. So to me, that's what success is. It's possible. You just have to figure it out. Everything and anything is possible. Your job is to just think. If you ask yourself questions and you listen, so many answers come your way. You may not want to do the, the what's being provided to you, but you will get answers. Because New York is tough. But it's part of it. I, I look at it as, okay, this is what I have to go through to get to my next goal. But I'm successful because I get to do what I want to do. If you are living your life in passion and purpose, and what I mean by that is the passion is that you love what you're doing and you would do it even if, it, if, even if you were doing it for free, you would still do it. That's the passion. And then the purpose is that you are using your passion to do something that's going to be amazing for the world in whatever which way that is. If every day you are living according to your passion and your purpose, it's gonna feel worth it. What happens in the process of this is a transformation of you, is a growth that you're gonna, when you walk in somewhere, there's just that aura about you. Because you've taken so many rejections, you know how to deal with stuff, you're confident, you have more, and you can make more demands because you got juice. After enjoying life with Smack's music, I was to discover that our Cristiano had another trick up his sleeve. He had designed and produced an LED t-shirt controlled by a mini computer that he keeps in his pocket. He asked me to follow him through Times Square, the heart of Manhattan, to show me his invention and the reactions he gets from it. Benvenue. <laughs> right? Wait, wait, it's Fucking French. I'm definitely French. I know you. I can't believe you're in New York. That's so cool. <laughs> I'm a superstar. I told you. So I, t I can tell everybody. Nobody believes. So, it's New York, right? It's beautiful. <laughs> Actually, this T-shirt is the most successful thing I ever done in my life. Nobody even cares about my music and stuff. Just the T-shirt. It's okay, but sometimes I would like they listen to my music. Where'd you get the shirt? Huh? Where'd you get the shirt? I made it myself. Yeah. It's like strips of LED and a, a little computer here. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is nice. Love this part. It's beautiful. Always look on the right side of life. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> On our journey, we met Petian and Wayne, 
photographers who told us a bit about being part of the New York hustle. La différence entre ici New York et puis uh, autre part, disons d'autres pays, c'est que ici uh, quand tu, tu, tu as un business et si tu es vraiment uh, appliqué dans ce business là, tu peux exceller très rapidement et uh, tu peux aller de 1 à 2 très rapidement. Je peux donner un exemple. Quand j'ai commencé la photographie euh, du genre euh, vendre les photos et tout ça, euh, en une semaine, je suis parti d'une photo de 5 dollars et j'ai eu un photoshoot de 1000 dollars en une semaine. Disons, j'ai juste l'œil et j'ai rencontré les gens qu'il faut, tu vois, des clients qu'il faut, des clients potentiels. Me, I'm a photographer. I've been a photographer since 2004. I'm originally from Brooklyn, so I'm just home, home, just enjoying myself here, shooting everything around me. Cristiano had yet another surprise, a special message he can display on his vibrant T-shirt without getting arrested, yet. Okay, I like that. Fuck Trump. Oh, no. Fuck Trump. Hell yeah. That's the way to do it, bro. Fuck Trump. <laughs> Sell it, man. You you make some money for that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Thank you. American Idol. Daniel, the fashion photographer, took me to Soho in Lower Manhattan. He's originally from Colombia, but grew up in Florida and moved here a year and four months ago. I got into photography, I want to say, 2000, 2010, um, when I, I used to be a skateboarder. So like I was heavy, heavily into it. It's, it's something I did every day. And I just started off by filming my friends and taking their photos for, to try to, for, so that they can get sponsored. It right now is like, I'm trying to make it a career. But back then it was, it was just something I was doing to hang out with my friends, have fun, you know? Cause I moved here last year, 2015 and 16 on New Year's. I just got up and left in New York. It was like, I need, I need this change in my life to where I know if I go to New York, I'm going to find myself. I'm going to make the best that I can be. I'm going to become the best person that I can be. Most of my inspiration that I really draw in is just walking around the streets of New York. Um, although there's a lot of boutiques, there's a lot of big stores. I just look at the images that they have and I, I analyze literally the the absolute most of it. Like I, I try to mimic a lot of a lot of these these photographs to where like a photograph is supposed to be able to be able to tell a story. How can I turn that that one little thing that that may not seem like anything into a beautiful image? Previously, I worked in the car business, so I made a lot of money, and I'm only 22 years old. And I made six figures, and I wasn't happy. So like I'm starting to get some exposure and I'm, I'm starting to do a lot of networking with bigger fashion companies, bigger magazines. It's, it's a really, really tough market. Every single industry is here. No matter what it is, every industry is here in New York and that's the biggest thing. And that's why a lot of people come here. I moved here and I, I didn't know anybody. I moved here New Year's Day 2016 on the first. No job, threw everything in trash bags and didn't just, just went for it, just gunned it. I took the chance, it was, and it was scary, but it's something you gotta do those scary things. It is really expensive, especially in Manhattan, it's extremely expensive. Again, it's the sacrifice you're making for living here in New York. So that's what this city does. It, it, it will literally push you to your limits. And that actually took me by surprise when I first, when I first moved here. Um, the stereotype is that New Yorkers are rude, they're angry. New Yorkers aren't rude or angry or spiteful. That stereotype is completely wrong. And so like, once you make a friend here, those, they're, they're gonna be your friend for, for a very long time. It's because everybody here is, for the, is here for the same reason. We use the word, the term clicky. Like you're in your, your group, your, your circle. That circle is also your team, but you grow as a team and everybody's constantly motivating yourself. Everybody here is one goal, make something of themselves. Sonia, the Italian actress, invited me to chat on her fire escape on St. Mark's Place, an iconic street in the East Village. 
right out of our high school, I started to study, I went to a conservatory, studied acting. Like the first time I went to see a show, uh, it was with my mom, she brought me to, she was a teacher, and she brought me to her school and they were doing like a theater piece with all the students. I was, oh my God, this is awesome. I don't know what the hell is this, but this is awesome. I want to be there, I want to do that. I've always had a trouble with giving up possibilities with like making a choice that cuts everything else out, which you do and you're forced to do millions of times in your life. And so I guess acting is the closest thing to live a millionth life. In the same city you can experience different countries and different, every neighborhood is a small city. I think that's what makes New York so open-minded and so uh, tolerant and accepting of almost everyone. When I came here, oh my God, I was falling in love three, four times a day. It's so, like, people are so beautiful because they're so different and so charming and fascinating. It's crazy. I've never seen anything like that. I was, okay, now I, I gotta move here. I want to be part of art projects that help change uh, people's mind uh, towards being more uh, accepting of diversity, civil rights, human rights, uh, uh, gender issues, LGBT issues. Uh, if you're not famous, and I'm not, uh, it's not that you can choose, that you can say, oh, to your agent, oh, just send me for that. Like, don't send me for those other things. And I think that it would be much harder for me to be a foreign actor in Italy than it is for me to be an Italian actor in New York. Because here they value, and some productions, especially film and TV, look for native speakers or, or for authentic accents. Voiceover, I, I got to work a lot in voiceover, uh, even in Italian. I'm, I'm narrating audiobooks, which I've never done in Italy, in Italian here. I grew up in a small village close to Rome, a place that I hate deeply, uh, very close minded. Uh, and uh, you can't thrive when people think the same way and push you to think the way they do. You can't be free in conformity and as human beings we, we mainly tend to conform and it's harder to conform in New York because there are so many options. There are places in which you can find a little bit of freedom and New York is one of them. I, I was here for a summer before moving and I had no money. Almost every person I met was offering me their couch and I found so much so solidarity and I think it's because everyone knows how difficult it is. Uh, after five years, I can see that not everything is so beautiful. I still love it because New York changes around you and that's good. Uh, so you can find freshness. Another fun thing about New York is that there are countless of weird jobs that you can do. And it's really fun. It's still like 50-50. I have to have both but I couldn't do just with acting. And now I'm working as a standardized patient, for example. So uh, for medical student uh, of, or for doctors, it's a great program. They hire actors to uh, play patients. There's countless of those things. The next appointment was with an American fashion stylist and personal shopper. Sarah chose to film at Washington Square in Greenwich Village. I, I've been doing fashion, working in fashion my entire life. Like even after school, growing up as a little girl, going to my grandmother's boutique and helping dress all the mannequins. And I started working in fashion and that's pretty much all I know. Um, and so now I'm a stylist and I've been in New York for 11 years. Ne next month, May 2nd, will be my 11th year anniversary here. I moved here from Miami, South Beach, but um, I'm originally from Colorado. I was raised in a very small town on the border of Colorado and Kansas. I lived in Arkansas, then I went to school in Florida, then I moved to Australia, I lived in Sydney, and then I came back and now uh, in Miami and now in New York. So I just love different cultures, but that's what we get all in one melting pot here. I want to create something that I can help people and give back and still be able to do the thing I love and be creative. People are busy, they don't have enough time, 
you know, they don't know what to wear. They want to look professional for their jobs. And that's where I come in and I can like try to make people feel confident. And this is the place I need to live for what I want to do. I couldn't live in the Midwest. I mean, maybe California, but if not, it would have to be Europe or New York. It's the fashion capital of the world. So in a way, I think after 9-11, then this city came together a lot more. But here, I feel like, you know, You'll just be stand, someone will be standing there with a map and someone will just walk up and be like, oh, can I help you decide, you know, do you need to catch a certain train or where are you going, you know? Um, so little things like that. But I, I do see the city is very tight knit like that, you know? People try to help. I was moving here from South Beach in 2006 and uh, just a bunch of stuff had gone on. It was time for a change. And I came here and I'll never forget getting my first apartment in Little Italy on Mulberry Street and Hester Street and it was a six floor walk up and I got locked out once. It was my most embarrassing moment um, in my entire life from my apartment because it was my cat. I was like cleaning and it's a long story but I was about to get in the shower and I just had a t-shirt on and that's it. And my cat ran out and she, I grabbed her and then I was stuck outside with really nothing except for a t-shirt and a kitten in my hand. And I had to like, go ask the Chinese people down below if I can crawl up on their like stoop or whatever, their fire escape. And it was so embarrassing because they were having a family reunion. And I'm not kidding you when I say there were at least 15 Chinese people sitting around watching me walk in. And I'm like, they're all just staring at me. And I like made my way through the living room, through their, out their window and like carrying my cat barefoot up this and like threw her in. I'm like, get in there. And the guy came up and he's like, never do that again. I, I had so many random jobs all the time. Like I w worked at a vintage shop. I had like, <laughs> I don't know, just pests. I cat sit, I house sat. I mean, I did everything. Dog walked. But also getting to know the rules of the land because so many people don't know that there are specific rules you need to follow in New York, whether it's coming off the subway or getting onto the subway up the stairs. Don't hold hands with five people walking across the street. Um, you know, there's just certain etiquette rules and it's like learning those and then not trying to get annoyed by people that don't know them <laughs> because you're like, oh, what is this person doing? Let them off the train before they get on, you know. Sarah told me an interesting story about her arrival in New York. While she was on the plane from Miami with nothing but her suitcase, she was reading a fashion magazine and discovered personal shopping and the name of a big figure in the field. The next day she showed up to her office with resume in hand and was hired on the spot. As I was discovering more about New York's diversity, the Science March was being held in Times Square. People were protesting to highlight their concerns about the US government proposing to cut funds on scientific research and trivializing environmental issues. This same administration is also targeting art and immigration. Being submerged in a city that is so heavily identified with these subjects, I was surprised to learn that a government is willing to deconstruct them. Something like, wow, I love this city because of this and that. But wait, their government is taking a step back on all those things? Ash is what we call a content creator on social media. We met on the High Line, a former elevated train track on the west side of the city that was turned into a park. I started uh, on social media about, I guess about probably in early 2000s, like with MySpace and then that blossomed into other social medias like small little uh, platforms that came out and apps that came out. So I got really started with YouTube about 2012 I started actually making content and working with other creators on YouTube and also on Instagram. I'm born and raised, born and raised in New York, um, uh, out in Queens. This is such a vibrant city and there's so many things to do and there's so many things that you can do here and you can be anything and you can definitely experience almost anything here in New York. This is like the city of the world. There's every career imaginable here, and I think, you know, content creating is so accessible here. Um, YouTube has a base here, uh, YouTube Space New York, and I'm there constantly. That's my second home. 
It's free for YouTubers um, to use the studios. Once you hit 10,000 subscribers or more, you can apply to unlock the space, is what they call it, and they you can have access to the cameras and equipment. There's uh, workshops. Uh, you know they have you know social events where YouTubers can connect with other YouTubers. Yes, I have a few friends who are, they definitely are, you know, where I'm headed towards and they're at, you know, hundreds of thousands of subscribers and, you know, in, in some cases millions of subscribers and I definitely learn from them and as again, I think uh, with m the majority of them, it was, like I said before, consistency. Consistency uh, with creating content on a regular basis and coming out with a steady schedule and dedicating yourself as much as you can to creating definitely made it possible for them to make it to that level. But I definitely have seen uh, the belly of the beast uh, with some people. I'm like, okay, they're really different. But then, but then some people, I'm really glad that they're still, you know, true to themselves and definitely still the same person. I think it's easier to connect with people here. Uh, people are a little bit more open here and more real. It's something a little bit more genuine here. I think you definitely, people are a bit more raw and more, more truthful to who they really are. I think uh, the city itself, you know, doesn't put on airs, so most people here don't. Yeah, and I, I earn money from uh, different revenues. I earn it uh, from Instagram. I do brand deals and sponsorships, and I've been able to work with some you know cool companies, and they've been able to help me. And YouTube has a great ad revenue program uh, called AdSense, and that's and it monetizes all the videos. Every YouTuber is earning a different rate. Every YouTuber earns a different rate. No one is there, no one knows what anyone is earning. Uh, you, you know, you, you know, you may say a dollar, but the next person it may be you know five dollars, or it may be something different. So you don't know what they're really making. They can be making a lot, a lot of money behind the scenes, and that's one of the things about YouTube is like they don't reveal what YouTubers make. I left Manhattan again to head to Coney Island on the southern coast of Brooklyn. Coney Island is a neighborhood on the ocean known for its beach and amusement parks. Kiara asked me to hold her interview there because of its freak show atmosphere. I started acting when I was 13 years old, actually. I discovered this magical world of theater. I was a lonely child, so basically my whole life was surrounded by books and stories. And that was my first approach. The idea that you can escape and make friends and have another life in another story that someone wrote for you. And then I started writing my own stuff and acting on my things. So it goes quite way back. But basically, basically what I do and what I like to do is telling stories, no matter how. Uh, so I write, I act, actually also with my side job, which is being a stylist, personal shopper, uh, that you're telling a story that way too and what I really think is that is that it works the more it is honest the more it works I lived in Sicily until 24 then I moved to Rome for almost 10 years and then a bunch of months ago I moved here Coney Island is a magical place I think every circus every freak show to me is sort of an inspiration. We all need stories that gives voice to the little misfit, the little dropout there's in each and any of us. That was my first approach to theater. One of the, one of the reasons why I moved here is that I want to be what I was not before coming here. I want to do what I couldn't do before. I said to myself, well, now you cross the ocean, now challenge yourself for real, otherwise why did you? In New York you never feel like a stranger because everyone is from somewhere else. Besides, New Yorkers are amazing, amazing, welcoming. I was scared. I left everything I had, my career, my family, my friends, my island, my language. But I think that a smart thing to do is to turn your, your Achilles heel in your strength point. So, okay, yes, I'm Italian, I'm a foreigner, I have an accent, so for now I will try to use it. I think it's the way this city works and it's why this city is so great, it's so amazing. People appreciate what you do and they are like open and they're like, oh, so this is what you do, okay, let's, let's do things together. Uh, when you're a natural and you are in New York, 
there are some tools that you can use. So you subscribe to these websites that basically work as databases. So you have your face there, you have your reel. And through this website, you can find auditions. So you can sign up for auditions. Or sometimes it might happen that someone reaches out to you. And you know, which is a fun question, everyone will ask to everyone, where are you from? They will not say, oh, you are French, oh, you are Italian, no, 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 no. It's not that they spot an accent. It's that, of course, you're from somewhere else. <laughs> because they are from somewhere else, too. Max is a musician from New York. He answered to my questions, sitting on the stage of the Sidewalk Cafe on Avenue A in the East Village. The first time I picked up an instrument was um, in the third grade. Uh, they were seeing who wanted to be in the orchestra, and I saw the, the stand-up bass, the double bass, and I thought, oh, that's really cool, it's huge. Uh, so I started playing it just because it was big and looked cool. I'd, I'd listened to a lot of pop music, like Hanson and NSYNC and Britney Spears at the time, uh, huge when I was growing up, like around 1998. But then one day I was in the back of my parents' car and I heard this like really loud, really kind of raw noise and I didn't know what it was and there was somebody screaming and I was like, Mom, what is this? And she's like, it's Nirvana. And I was like, whoa, I didn't know people could do that, you know, could sing like that. And, and so I was like, Mom, we got to see, we got to go see Nirvana. Can you take me to a Nirvana concert? <laughs> like the first day I heard them and she's like, uh, sorry, I stayed up all night. Um, that night praying that he would come back to life. <laughs> I'm like a huge fan of film. I also work in film when I'm not making music and I, I go to the movies all the time if I ever have free time. If I see a really good uh, movie that kind of hits me in some kind of philosophical or emotional way then I'll spend the entire like train ride home or the walk home kind of just writing lyrics kind of based on these thoughts that the movie gave me. Um, I mean what I'm trying to do, um, I just want as many people to hear my music as possible. For a lot of people it's like this goal, it's like I'm going to make it to New York City, I'm going to play my music in the big city, you know, everyone's going to think it's cool. And then for me I'm kind of like, okay, I'm in the city, there's all these opportunities to play, but it seems really crowded. So my kind of mentality has been more of wanting to get out of the city and find a smaller town or whatever and see if I can turn some heads there and kind of build it from there and then maybe ride the wave back here later. Um, yeah, I think, because well, there's this idea, you know, if I can make it there, I'll make it anywhere. And then there's like, you know, concrete jungle where dreams are made of and all this, like all these lyrics kind of romanticizing the city. Within a five block radius, there's probably like 30 or 40 places that people can play a show. So I think kind of the scale of the city is a little hard to imagine. A lot of it's just kind of who you know in a certain way. Like I got one of my songs on, on the TV show, Mr. Robot, um, a friend of mine, was the assistant editor on it and he kind of just put it in there as a placeholder and then he texted me a few weeks later and was like, hey, nobody told me to take this song out yet, so um, I think it's in. And then, you know, I got to like sign the paperwork, they paid me to have it and then the song was in the show. I did a lot of research on just kind of how music is being consumed lately and, and how it spreads. I saw this joke on Twitter a few weeks before South by Southwest. It's like, oh, I'm going to South by Southwest this week. I hope I see some of my favorite brands there. Is it just the music or is it, you know, is it the person? So it's like, do I want people to like the music or do people just have to like me? Right now we're in the Sidewalk Cafe and it's kind of the, the home of, of anti-folk, uh, which is this genre started by this guy called Latch. Like it's kind of the gift and the curse, like there, that there are so many venues and so many places where you can perform, but at the same time, you know, if you're into just like strictly like harsh noise, there's a place for that. If you're into metal, there's a place for that. If you're into whatever, like anti-folk where, you know, there's a place for that. So it's kind of like you can't, like your people exist and they are here. <laughs> um, you just have to find them. And I think that's kind of a special thing about New York City. In all the interviews, I asked them their thoughts on specific subjects, one being networking. Networking is, I mean, you know, I've learned that it's so important. That's, I mean, unfortunately, it's more important than the product that you're creating. Yeah. So networking, networking is the biggest thing you can do. I mean, in a, in a city like New York, where people are so collaborative and so open, it's, it's even easier than you think doing networking. Oh, yeah. 
networking, yeah, networking in New York is super easy because you can just talk to anyone every, anywhere you go. I feel like in LA, you can't even walk up to someone and say hello because they're already with their group and it's weird. But in New York, people just kind of wander in, sit next to each other. Oh, hey, how are you? Where are you from? Oh, cool. Here's my card. We should, you know, and it's, it's very easy to talk to people here. That's what I like about it. Everybody just talks to everyone. You can just come out here to the park and have a conversation with whoever. I think, uh, I think definitely you have to uh, be more outgoing. Don't wait to be approached because you never know who you're going to meet and you never know who anyone is, especially here in New York. It's easier to network here than it was in Italy for me. Like in Italy, you're required to meet certain people. Here, you can say, oh, I don't like that person. And I don't like a lot of people. Like, I'm very specific on the people I like. Another question was, what is it to be original? I think that everybody is original. You only need something to say. Even 3,000 years ago, uh, in, in ancient Greece, someone was like, oh, what could we do? Everything is already made in theater. Everything is done. What could... What could we do? What can we do? Original. So that's, of course, that's a nonsense. Am I doing something original? I would say no. I'm, I have a guitar in my hand. I'm singing songs. <laughs> that's not original, right? But I'm doing something authentic to me. And that's what I would say make it unique in my perspective. Originality is interesting because uh, um, I saw this quote once that was like, you know, for anything to be truly original, like in music, there has to be like no drums, there can't be any words, you know, there can't be any instruments because like everyone's used these things before and, and, you know, like it has to be totally out there. So it's kind of like originality is sort of what can you do with all these pieces that everybody else has and can you maybe not make something that no one's ever heard before, but uh, put an interesting spin on it to move it forward. What do you think about the concept of talent and genius? Does it exist? Talent is the word you use uh, to avoid your failure. I personally think I have zero talent. I just have persistence, passion. So I think talent is something that anyone can build, right? So, um, for example, I loved to dance when I was younger. I never got the formal training for it. Um, so if I were a genius dancer, I would just know all the forms. And it's just something that just naturally comes out of me, right? But if I wanted to, if I am drawn to dance, but I'm not yet like a perfect dancer, um, then the talent comes when I put in the work. Some people get angry that Jack White is on like the top 100 guitar players list. He he pulls these sounds out of a guitar that somebody who studied guitar their entire life could never do because they don't have that feeling, you know what I mean? Talent is kind of a loose word because I would say he's incredibly talented because it's not easy to pull something like that off. Um, but then somebody who's been classically trained in like music conservatories all their life might be like, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's hard until you see the legacy to like truly define genius. Well, genius is a concept that it's actually very modern, like I, I guess it's like, uh, nine, 19th century is like all the romanticism and, and the genius because before art was basically replicating what was already done. Think of all the representation, religious representation. It was not about being original at all. Uh, so it's something modern that I think we stress a lot about it. And now, let's wrap it up the willingness to not give up. Uh, I think that it's easy to get discouraged here. Like I moved here and like went to a karaoke bar one night and met uh, a couple of people who ended up being uh, friends of mine the whole time I've been here. They've introduced me to, um, to other people who are doing what I'm doing and uh, I, it happened right away. You start asking people around, you will get help. You will get position in the right place you will get access. Um, by just going out, supporting other people, making yourself seen is the, is the beginning of it. 
You can't just be home all the time and expect people to come out for you and you never go out for nobody. Yeah. Um, you cannot just walk up to a place and say, hey, I'd like to play here, and they've never seen you before. Um, you come back a few times, you find out who the owner is, you say hello to him, what a beautiful place. The next day, next week you come back, it's me again. And then one day you say, hey, how would you like to have live music here? And then he says, you know what, that's not a bad idea. After meeting with all the artists, I had the confirmation that what I had felt the few times I came here was right. New York is a very unique place, harsh like every big city, but also surprisingly incredibly welcoming in a very special way thanks to its full variety. I hope this film and this conclusion will reach all the politicians throughout the world who want to close the borders, if you see what I mean. And if you ask me if all this made me want to try to make it in New York, well, as Cristiano puts it, with this documentary, I've already started. I was feeling